I've proven to myself in this last year that I can do shit that scares me. I've proven to myself in this last year that I can physically alter the way that I look and feel if I so choose to. Hey pals, today I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the changes that I've noticed within myself, both physically and emotionally, shall we say, in the last year between January 2022 and January 2023. So, like I've mentioned, uh, last year I was in my second year of sobriety and a lot of the stuff that I've been experiencing and the changes that I've noticed are kind of continuing on from the first year. You know, it's, it's not like everything is new and different each year that we go through. Uh, a lot of it is very familiar. But really, I have to say, as challenging as the last year has been for different reasons, you know, like we say, even though we're in recovery, life still happens, challenges still get thrown our way. <laughs> uh, you know, not to mention the state of affairs in the wider world and economic climate. It, there's a lot going on. But it's still, despite all of that, been a year where I've probably witnessed the most consistent positive changes, shall we say. And the first one that I wanted to talk a bit about is an increase in self-awareness. And that's something that's definitely built steadily since the first few weeks in recovery. I think where it's kind of taken me in the last year and especially in the last six months has been an increase of self in self-awareness but not just it's kind of the negative stuff because I noticed that a lot last year and the year before I just became hyper aware of all of my anxieties and triggers and my negative habits and stuff like that whereas now I've kind of evolved and I'm not saying that stuff doesn't happen ever because it does of course it does but it's more balanced and I'd say the positive now outweighs the negative um, of what I'm experiencing. And I'm now actually able to use that self-awareness to also notice positive things about myself, you know, things that I like about myself, uh, strengths, and starting to feel as if I have the confidence to express that a little bit more, both to myself and kind of, you know, outwardly towards other people. But yeah, self-awareness, is a wonderful thing and it's not something that everybody has uh, and that's something else that I'm also <laughs> noticing more and more and it's not like blowing my own self-awareness trumpet here I'm just saying that it's really bloody beautiful to feel that something that felt really overwhelming and difficult in the beginning has now turned out to be as well as that also quite a nice gift and I'm starting to really see the benefits as well of keeping a record of our progress, you know? So in doing this reflection of some of the changes that I've noticed this past year, it makes it a lot easier if we've got some pages or some notes to reflect back on because some things are very subtle, some things are bigger. Trends are easier to spot as well. And I am not, definitely not the best at doing this. So I, I, I I can't sit here and overly preach about it because I'm not consistent in it. But when I when I do remember to, or when I feel a particular way, I do try to make a note of it so that I can reflect back on it at a later date. But also, it's quite cathartic in itself, you know, and it and it helps to kind of get out of our heads a little bit and put it down on paper. Uh, there's something in that. I think we've known that for a long time, but when we feel slumpy is when that stuff le is least likely to happen. And, and I'm still working on kind of still motivating myself at those times to do those things that I know help me feel better. The second thing that I want to talk about is weight loss. Um, it's not a point that I particularly want to spend a long time on. I think it's, um, it's something that can be a challenging topic um, for many of us. And it's not something I I want any of 
this to kind of revolve around but there has been a steady weight loss for me over time not in the beginning not in the beginning and not necessarily even throughout you know there's a kind of it kind of it's, it's not like a roller coaster i was gonna say waves I, I use that word too much it's not like that either basically i guess what i'm trying to say is that sometimes i'll have some weeks where i indulge other weeks i don't um so that it's not like just steadily declining i'm not just steadily losing weight that's not happening at all like now i'm pretty like plateaued i think i'm at what i'm supposed to be um but it fluctuates still that's normal hormonal stuff you know sometimes we come fit eat sometimes it's christmas whatever so that's fine uh but that is something that once we get into our kind of steady recovery healthy weight loss is something that we can look forward to because it kind of happens naturally on its own as we learn to kind of find healthy outlets and uh healthier ways in maintaining you know times when we feel a little bit triggered or we feel a little bit like we're, we're craving bad food or it could be anything i've definitely noticed <laughs> in the past 12 months or so though that i definitely have kind of a, a, a nature but i don't i don't know whether to call it like an addictive nature but i I do definitely go like all or nothing into things and that can be food, that can be a hobby, that can be whatever and I, I think it's a part of my ADHD, it's a tendency that's quite, uh, you know, uh, I almost said popular, it's very popular in the ADHD community, it's it's very prevalent, uh, you know, pick, picking things up on a bit of a whim and then deciding it's not for you and moving on to something else but again, it's, it's something that I'm kind of aware of now so I can monitor it and make sure that it, and it's fine actually like it's fine if I want to get into crocheting you know one week and I decide it's not for me and then I go and pick up pottery the next fine there's no damage done but where it can be with the weight loss for example it can it can become uh, a kind of a focus where it, it it shouldn't be necessarily so that's something where as much as I've noticed a very positive effect there are some things to be mindful as well. There is a flip side of that. Uh, number three, I am so much more brave in my life. I try new things. You know, we talk about getting out of that comfort zone all the time. I try new things. I I meet, you know, more people. I I seek things out and and I dare to reach for them a little bit more. And I do a lot less people pleasing. I still do have that. I still have that little niggle often um, where I'm like, oh, my people pleasing uh, little sort of devil on my shoulder is popping up again. Or, you know, uh, at times where I, like, I know I should have a difficult conversation, but I can feel like I really don't want to. But I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good now at, at being present at those times, being present in the moment and having a bit of a... a an inner monologue with myself to say like okay cool so you've been triggered into a little bit of people pleasing or something you know like, okay where's this stemming from and actually what's the outcome that we want and if you just people please and nod and smile are you going to get to where you want to be in life in general no and that tends to be enough then for me to kind of like rein that back in but i as a as a whole i'm a lot more brave uh, and I'm really enjoying a sense of freedom. Like, n not in terms of, like, I feel like I can do anything. I'm not there. But there's definitely that sense of, like, there's a lot out there in the world. And it's not quite as far beyond my grasp as what I used to feel or I actually dare to dream and dare to feel inspired now whereas for most of my drinking years especially you know I I didn't really dream of much I never really dared to not even you know uh what, what a happy future could look like I I wouldn't it's it it just it didn't really feel possible so now it's nice to feel that it very much is possible and within reach. Number four, I've got way, way less tolerance for bullshit. <laughs> and that comes with, you know, 
really taking learnings from the especially the, the kind of beginning of 2022 uh, where I had to kind of learn very quickly that as much as I'd made a lot of progress in my romantic relationships that I still wasn't necessarily at a stage with my friendships where I was being open and honest, setting boundaries, not people pleasing and you know expecting the respect back in the way that I would give it out that was worded terribly. <laughs> Basically, friendships are give and take, aren't they? And it's very important that in our friendships, we feel that we are supported, that we are heard, that we, you know, that we're listened to, and that we're respected. And, and at a core, that we are accepted for who we are, or who we choose to be in that moment. And that it's also respected and accepted that we are fluid as people and we change and we grow um, because that's not always what I've experienced. And it's not always what I've given out either. I have to say that. And like friendships for me is still an area that I am, I don't know, growing, working on, um, deciding, you know, kind of how it, how I best like to socialize, how I, thrive through friendships because uh because I've had to focus so much on myself I think the last couple of years the rest has kind of taken like a back seat and it's taken longer for me to kind of get around to that part of life to really focus on it and that's kind of where I'm at now and what I meant by having less tolerance for bullshit <laughs> is that I can I can very clearly now see like what's not for me. I can read the red, the signs, the red flags, you know, you can tell when you meet somebody, do they bond over drama? You know, what kind of stuff do they talk about? Are they open? Are they telling you what they think you want to hear? Stuff like that. And uh, it just doesn't interest me anymore. So it's nice to kind of see that my brain like is filtering the world in a different way now. And I'm focusing much more on what's good and positive and people that are going to be good and positive than the roller coaster drama that life used to be. You know, I don't need to go into that because I'm pretty sure we all freaking relate. Number five is, is like the best part, which is a sense of self is starting to return. I say return. Oh, I don't really know if it was there to begin with, but you know, before, in our previous life you know when you have had a drink or you've gone out or there's a moment for whatever reason and you feel like yeah kind of I'm, I'm 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 feeling myself a little bit but we've all had that feeling at some point at least at least once sure i'm sure i'm sure we have i could be wrong but whatever that when you quit drinking goes <laughs> at least it did for me I, I was literally never feeling anything positive about myself ever as soon as I quit drinking. It just felt like I was this kind of dithering, anxious, nervous mess, the shell of a person. And I didn't, and I kind of felt like I had to, I had to de-layer, I had to like peel that onion to the core where there was nothing left and then decide which parts I want to reintroduce or which parts to introduce for maybe the first time. And it's only now, I think, in January, 2023, that I'm starting to feel like I have a sense of self back. I've got enough pieces mindfully put back or put in for the first time that I have a sense of kind of self, of, of, of who I am, of who I would like to be, or at least the knowledge that where I'm headed is a place of warm, safe, balanced, love, fun, all those positive words, that's, that's where this path is headed. And so I feel very content knowing that. Whereas last year, it 
especially in the beginning and the middle, it felt a bit like, is this feeling ever going to end? Am I ever going to stop feeling so shaken to the core? Or stop feeling as though I don't know where I belong, you know? Or, or feeling as though I don't have anything good to offer. That shit's exhausting. No. Instead, I've had increased self-awareness. Weight loss over time. I'm much more brave. Much less tolerance for bullshit. And finally, a self of sense. Se and finally, <laughs> a sense of self is returning. As silly and goofy as that probably looks. And honestly, in the next year, I, I am very excited to see what the next kind of set of changes are going to be, or the next, the next little gift of recovery. I've proven to myself in this last year that I can do shit that scares me. I've proven to myself in this last year that I can physically alter the way that I look and feel if I so choose to. I've proven stuff to myself that I've never really done before. And I probably haven't even seen all of the positive ripple effects of that yet, but I'm really excited to see where 2023 takes us. And this community has grown vastly in the last year. And it's really good to see that it's becoming more and more mainstream and that people are jumping on this bandwagon. I'm so excited to see what further changes and opportunities and inspiration 2023 is going to bring our way. The more we lean into just daring to be ourselves, setting boundaries, saying no, saying yes to more shit that we want to do and see, creating new friendships, nurturing old ones, being good to ourselves, doing the stuff that feels good, doing less of the stuff that feels shit. That's when exciting stuff happens. It just does. Whether you believe in the law of attraction or not, people buy people and people know when you're being authentic. Even if they're not aware of it themselves, people are naturally drawn to authentic people. So the more we dare to do that, the more awesome stuff is gonna happen. It's gonna come out of it. The ripple effect. Pow. I'm excited. And I'm glad that we're here together to experience it. All right, pals, enough of the swooshy shit. I'll catch you next time. Mwah.